and then we went on to the Hines County uh, Jail. And then from Hines County Jail, we went to Parchman Penitentiary. Oh, you spent time at Parchman. At Parchman Penitentiary. Never will forget that. I can't stand bugs today because of Parchman Penitentiary. Tell me about Parchman. I've heard of Parchman. What was it like to be incarcerated? And how long were you there? I'm thinking, seeing as if we had to stay in, we couldn't stay in past 30 days and we, would have been we wouldn't have been able to appeal our case. So I'm thinking that we stayed in right up to, what, 25, 26, or 27 days or something like that. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was it like, first of all, in Hines County? And do you remember how long you stayed there? How was that different from Parchman's Farms? Well, in Hines County, we were in a large, kind of like a, a, a large room, and it, it must have been five or six of us maybe might have been in that room, mm -hmm. uh, at least four. Yeah. And the fellows was upstairs now, and, and they used to sing to us at night, we sang to them, and, and so uh, then there was bars kind of like a, around the whole cell. Mm. But now in the penitentiary, then, you know, we were, there was two of us in the room, you know, bunk bed, and so you in a cell, like, so mm -hmm. we, you know, we really, we were locked down at both places, but the penitentiary was a little, a little different, a little colder, too. Mm. Tell me about that. What kind, I've heard that, that, that during the summer they would turn the, the heat up, and during the winter they would turn the heat off. Well, this was summer. Okay. This was summer, and my memories of the, uh, of Parchman, well, first leaving Hines County, going going to Parchman, we were in the uh, old truck, the back of an old truck, and I can remember that terrible ride. And see, I don't know how far it was at the time, but it seemed as if we were going, we was going to never get there. We were just almost packed in like cattle. It, it was so many of us uh, in this truck. Some was standing, and, and some of us was trying to root in together. The truck was packed. The truck was packed. The truck was packed. So it was more than just the Freedom Riders, or was it? It, it must have been. It must have been other, uh, other blacks on there, too. Of course, there was no whites in, in there with us. Mm -hmm. So it must have been other. So uh, when we got there, I don't know why we had flip-flaps on. Uh, maybe, I don't know why we had flip-flaps, I didn't leave Nashville with flip-flaps on, but they took those. So you had no shoes. That's right, and we, and so that's, that, and so I, I remember having to walk on the, uh, on, on the concrete, and then on the, and they kept the lights on at night, that seemed, I, seemed that I remember that, and the little bugs. In, Nash, in, in Nassau, Bahamas, we call them sand flies. And so it, it could have been some type of sand file, just some type of little bug that can come through the screen. And so I just, that's, that's, but that's, that that's was that, your that most terrible favorite. remember, yes, of that. And then we hadn't washed our hair in I don't know how long. And so, and even we used to cover up at night with the sheet and it seems as if the bugs would still get in. Mm -hmm. In the sheet with us. And that's, I, I remember that. And then one thing too I remember, it looked like it was a governor's birthday or something. And they gave us cake. And it was real salty. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. So they yes. added salt to the cake. Yes. And were you a member of SNCC? Yes, I helped to form SNCC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell me about that. I mean, you helped to form SNCC. That's important. What, were you in, uh, I know they initially they had a meeting in, in North Atlanta. Carolina. Okay. Um, and and we had another one in Nash in uh, uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was with that one in uh, in Atlanta. Okay. Tell me about that experience. What was it like starting an organization that would become world renowned? What I remember about uh, SNCC was just being so excited to see all of the students from look like around the world. I guess it might have been just around the South. Mm -hmm. And the this changes. Black and white students? Yes, black and white students. Mm -hmm. And the changes that we were going to make. 
and our philosophy and the philosophy of the uh, adult group then at that time that was a group with uh, 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 NCLC, Dr. King's organization. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just the, just how that we were going to change the situations for the blacks. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a real urgency. Yes, oh yes. For change. Mm -hmm. And being young at the time, you felt that you could change oh, the yes. world. Oh yes, oh yes, yes, we could change it overnight. How did, how <laughs> was the, 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 the chemistry between the younger people of SCLC and those older folk in uh, SCLC? Well, we had more contact at that time with the, uh, the Nashville adult. Okay. That was Dr. Kelly Miller Smith. And uh, this SCLC at that time was, it was not, uh, they were just kind of just getting started, so we didn't really have that much contact mm -hmm. that early part with them. Our con strong contact was with the, uh, with the Nashville movement, mm -hmm. adult mm -hmm. movement that became a part of SCLC. Mm -hmm. And so it, they didn't want us to get hurt, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And they wanted us to just move a little slower and of course we were ready to go there because we were going to do it overnight mm -hmm. right. and uh, we used to call a meeting and would meet early in the morning because we knew a lot of them was not going to get up and come to mm -hmm. the meeting and we'd be done past things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I can remember uh, look like CTV, Vivian of course was there at, at the time and he was just, uh, he was going to change right with us overnight. Mm -hmm. Did James Foreman have any, uh, was he involved in, in, in that part of the struggle that you were involved in? You talking about with CORE? With, um, yeah. Did, with, did the one that came with SNCC? Uh, right. No. Okay. No, he was not involved at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, he, uh, he came on maybe a year or so later. How we met him is we went to Chicago, and this was after I got out of jail in Mississippi. Went through Nashville and picked up some of my things and sent the rest of them on back to my mother here in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to Chicago to raise money. And he was involved then with the Fedville, I think it was Fed, Fedville, Tennessee, uh, Arkansas, mm -hmm. or something like North that. North Carolina. North, it was, it was someplace in there. He was involved uh, with yes. that. And so then um, a number of the, uh, some of us, thought that uh, he would do well with SNCC mm -hmm. at that time, and so... Uh, so you yeah, sort of recruited him yes, to mm -hmm. come with SNCC. Well, how long did you work with, with SNCC? Um, now, I got married also during that time, mm -hmm. and so we was with SNCC and Dr. King's mm -hmm. movement because SNCC didn't have any, didn't have any money, right. at, <laughs> and so the adult group had the money. Mm -hmm. Not that uh, you know it was with the adult group because they had the money, but they could to support the uh, the programs. Right. And uh, and we were with both, and I guess it must have been about uh, what th three years, mm -hmm. well, I know between two years. Maybe two years, yeah. two to three years. Yeah, you were organized, SNCC was organized in 1960. And then in 61, of course, the Freedom Rides came through. Uh -huh. And SNCC had recruited students to go into Mississippi in 62, 63, 64, particularly uh -huh. with the, um, the um, what was it called, the Summer Project? Yeah, the Summer Project and the voter registration. Right, yes. When I was not with SNCC at that time. Okay. Now, I was working at that time in the North. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Clearly a number north. of us felt that we needed to have been then involved in the economic side of it. Mm -hmm. And then there was some felt, you know, was working up on this end. And so uh, I was in Ohio mm -hmm. as Matt well, and Detroit and Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then even uh, down with us with uh, Robert Williams okay, in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We went down to see, this was, you know, 
all during that time. Right. And uh, Robert Williams, being the president of the Monroe, North Carolina branch of the NAACP, that's right. Believed in the necessity to to defend oneself. That's right. And he got in trouble with the national national NAACP as a result of that. Um, were you involved with 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 him at that particular time? Uh, when you say involved with him at that particular time, we were down there. Okay. So you were going from different places, assisting people with different kinds of things that they were that's doing. That's right. That's right. He yeah. asked for help. Okay. And Dr. King, at that time, Paul Brooks, uh, which which we got married mm -hmm. at Robert's, out of Robert's house. Mm, okay. Okay. And so he was asking uh, for help. And so uh, Paul uh, went to Dr. King and asked him if he could uh, could go down and mm -hmm. see what was going on down there. And so that's how uh, a number of us then went down there to uh, help Robert. Mm -hmm. And so as a matter of fact, we were down there when he had to leave the country, mm -hmm. okay. when, he, when he was accused of uh, kidnapping, kidnapping this couple. couple. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's, that's very interesting because, of course, at that particular time, the, the movement is sort of escalating. It's becoming more that's aggressive. That's right. We are really skipping around here now, too. Yes, uh -huh. yes. In, in terms of how that that whole process was going, you know, you had, in 1960, the emphasis was nonviolent direct action, 1960, 61, 62. Uh, when um, in Monroe, North Carolina, uh -huh. with, um, with, what, with uh, Robert Williams, it obviously was a situation where uh, he had made a decision that he was going to defend himself and the community. That created a problem in that organization anyway. And then he had to leave North Carolina. What did, were you guys there when he actually left, when he had to? Cause he uh, yes, but backing up some, uh, before that, there were nonviolent uh, demonstrations. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, his group was going to was protecting the nonviolent right. uh, demonstrators. Yes, and so we were there when he uh, doing that ride. And as a matter of fact, that I think that was my second time of being afraid. Were you involved in any of the demonstrations in Birmingham? Yes. Mm -hmm. And during the April May 1963, were you? Here? No, my time was before that. Okay. And this had to have been. As a matter of fact, I called my brother the other day to, to uh, ask him because I was talking with a lady and she couldn't pinpoint the year I was talking about. And this was before we came in here on the Freedom Ride. So this had to be 59 or 60. I was arrested at Lummers. And my brother, Louis Burks, was the uh, lookout. What were you arrested for? Sitting in at the lunch counter. You and a number of others? Uh, no. Or were you alone? I don't know if there were a number of others at that lunch counter, but then I'm thinking that there was a, a number of places that we were uh, going into that particular day. So now I think I was just sent in to Lovemus. Was this as a result of the Alabama Christian movement? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Reverend mm -hmm. Shellisworth. Reverend Shellisworth. Okay. And you were arrested? Yeah, right. And we went to trial. Mm -hmm. And how long were you? Do you remember how long you were in jail at that time? I'm thinking it was overnight. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm thinking it was uh, overnight. How does that period of your life end? I mean, do you simply drop out of the movement? Uh, uh, do you, now that you are living up north, you simply go back and you get a job? Or, or what's, the, what's the process here now? What happens? Well, uh, no, we don't drop out. We uh, move on. Mm -hmm. My husband at, uh, at that time, as I said, we got married in uh, a little town called Lancaster, Lanca Lancaster mm -hmm. I believe, uh, South Carolina. As a matter of fact, they have on my uh, marriage certificate uh, white. They have to cross it out and put colored on there because when he called in, they, he'd been out of East St. Louis. I guess he sounded like he was white. Mm -hmm. 
But we felt that uh, we needed a financial base. And uh, then we went looking into ways that uh, we could make money, raise money. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, invented the Afro pick. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he went into business. Mm -hmm. And so that's then we. Uh, you moved on to. Yes, we, we, to we moved on, on to that and trying to. Uh, get the business off the ground, mm -hmm. training uh, blacks, uh, attending uh, meetings, and uh, reprogramming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you then decided that, and you mentioned earlier, that some people continue in the vein that they were going, but you saw there was a necessity for developing something economic. Right. Were you successful in doing that? In terms of developing something that will be long lasting and I know if you develop the, the Afro pick, that meant something, you know, pretty substantial. It was. It was at the time. It is not uh, of course is we are not uh producing it now. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact it was virtually uh it was virtually taken. But we made money from it. We put a number of people to work, a number of spend off people, a number of people that worked with us saw what they could do on their own. Mm -hmm. And we, the, at one time, we had three shifts going, but we eventually manufactured it uh, up in uh, Ottawa, Michigan. We first we started with it uh, in Detroit, and he received a, a patent mm -hmm. uh, on it. And that is any comb that it, that was made at that time, the Afro pick with the cover on it. Mm -hmm. It was if it was not ours, it was violating our patent. And you had a lot of them who did, mm -hmm. and who made good money from it. Now we made money also, mm -hmm. but not the type of money that uh, should have been made yeah. from it, and not the type of things that we thought that we was going to be able to do with it. And uh, we was fighting the big boys, and uh, it was a hard fight, and it was a long fight too. Yeah, it always yeah. is. Yeah. I know as a result of your activities in the movement, you received a, a placket of some sort from Dr. King, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And could you tell me about, tell me just and, a bit about that? Uh, this was received uh, after the Freedom Ride. Dr. King had, and, uh, had a meeting for us, and this was the students who participated in the Freedom Ride, and I think it was maybe from all of uh, uh, throughout the South, I don't remember right now, but this was in Nashville, I remember, and it looked like it was at the Grand Ole Opry. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Mayor McKeever was there, mm -hmm. and we all received a $500 scholarship. So that's what I ended up finishing Tennessee State on.